sometimes the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in the field, and you sell everything you have in order to obtain it. Sometimes the kingdom of heaven is like a precious coin that you've lost, and you search and you search until you find it. And sometimes the kingdom of heaven is like a pearl of great price, and you do whatever it takes to get it. Jesus said, to you, it has been given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. So what is the kingdom of heaven? And how do we unravel those mysteries? Is Dreams and Mysteries with John Paul Jackson. It was early January when I received the news that would change my life forever. As I lay me down to sleep on the lonely ground beneath my feet, does anyone know? Does anyone know? My father, whom I hadn't talked to in years, had written me. He asked me to come home as my mother had gotten the fever. It seemed as if she would not last through the winter. I wasn't looking forward to the long train ride home. I was still angry with my father and he with me. He was right and I knew it. And it made it even harder for me to go back. Like a lifeboat sent to rescue me You never give up, you always let me in Lose the chains, I'm free Sometimes, going back home is not what you think it is at all Sometimes, going back home is a place you've never been to And I was about to find out That God will open up to us a door for the word. A door. Hmm. That we may speak forth the mystery of Christ. Do I know you? I was sent here to talk to you. By who? Well, last night while you were praying, you were asking for some answers to some very difficult questions. Not impossible questions, but, but very difficult questions. And so I've been sent here to help you kind of navigate through 
some spiritual mysteries. And because they're spiritual, they require some change. Change that actually begins inside of you more than anywhere else. So what do I have to change? Jenny, we all live in a kingdom and there's many kingdoms. There's been many kingdoms of men throughout history. They come, they go, they rise, they fall. But there is a kingdom, a kingdom above every kingdom that spans far beyond the limited kingdoms of men. One will not see the castles on earth of this kingdom because the kingdom begins in the heart. It, it begins inside of us. And Jenny, this isn't a kingdom of politics or economics. It's a kingdom of brotherhood. It has an aristocracy based not on dominance, but on service. It has a house of lords, but it's not filled with eldest sons. It's filled with selfless brothers. It's not a kingdom of pride, but of humility. It knows no greed, but fosters selfless giving. It's a kingdom that does not banish the weak, but does offer to make the weak strong. This kingdom is the kingdom of heaven. And in the final analysis, how we've lived our life in this kingdom is all that will matter. How can I be a part of that kingdom? There's some things that God wants to do that begin inside of us that's going to change everything in your life. But it's going to require you accepting who He is as the only begotten Son of God. Well, how do I do that? Well, let's pray. Right here on the train? Right here on the train. There's really no better time. Okay, I think I'm ready. Pray after me. Father. Father. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I need your help. I need your help. And I know that I'm not living in this kingdom that I've heard about. And I know I'm not living in this kingdom I've heard about. I believe Jesus is the Son of the living God. I believe Jesus is the Son of the living God. I'm asking you to forgive me of my sins. I'm asking you to forgive me of my sin. Take my life and use it. I pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Jenny, there's a couple of things I need to tell you before I leave. First, I need to tell you that everything is going to work out between you and your father. It's going to be fine. And second, I need to tell you that your mother is going to be okay. She is? She is. How did you know that? Jenny, that is what the kingdom is all about. Each one of you is involved in a moment-by-moment -moment battle against an enemy that you, for the most part, do not see. Satan's tactics are as covert and as secretive as he can make them. They are successful only to the degree that they remain unrecognized by you. Often, the only clue you have to detect this battle is the resulting emotional upheaval and pain you feel. Jesus gave us 72 parables to help us understand the mystery of the kingdom, and you're on a journey that will help you realize what has been provided for you. You see, this journey will result in the destruction of evil and dark forces all around you, and it's in this journey that you're going to encounter battles and within each battle, you're going to find a spiritual truth that will make you a champion. You will come to understand that in the simplest form, the kingdom is the righteous power and authority of God to justifiably rule over and protect all He created, including you. Much to the world's surprise, the kingdom of heaven does not begin on earth. It begins inside of you. The kingdom of heaven conquers the internal world of man before it conquers the external world of mankind. That's the part that makes it so hard because the battle begins inside of you. 
If it was external, we'd have some type of a measuring stick to chart our improvement by. But interior, inside, the battle is much more strenuous. What you do, you really don't want to do. And what you don't want to do, that's what you find yourself doing. The battle is classic, but the reward, it's eternal. You see, Jesus didn't come to earth to attack the sovereignty of man. He came to attack the sovereignty of Satan over man. God originally gave mankind authority over the earth, but man gave that authority to Satan when he fell. Satan flaunted that authority for 4,000 years. He even dangled it in the face of Jesus when he offered to give that authority back to him at his weakest point after he had fasted for 40 days. But Jesus had an entirely different plan for implementing his kingdom and regaining authority on the earth. Because of the sin of Adam, man had submitted himself to and become a slave of Satan and his evil empire. With the coming of Jesus, all that was about to change. The fullness of the kingdom of heaven was about to be introduced to the earth. Let's take a moment and see what some of you think about the kingdom of heaven. I believe the kingdom of God is the love of Christ and that that lives in you. I think the kingdom of God is the entire world and heaven because it's everything that God is. I used to think the kingdom of God was that the kingdom of God was heaven, somewhere that we were going to go after we died. But since I found freedom in Christ and found grace, um, I realize that it's something totally different. It's not somewhere we're trying to get to. It's a place that we already have inside of us. We have Christ in living in us. You see, we find the kingdom of heaven is not just a New Testament thought. It actually began in the Garden of Eden. Man was simply to subdue the earth and take authority over everything on it. God gave man two rules of the garden, or you might say two rules of the kingdom that he was to rule. Therefore, they had two choices on how to live their life and exercise their God-given authority. The first kingdom was a kingdom based on the tree of life. This offered man an opportunity to, you might say, become immortal in his being, meaning he wouldn't die. As long as he ate from the tree of life, he would live forever. And this kingdom was based on the harmony of man, God, and creation. They all worked together. Well, we also find that this was an eternal kingdom. It allowed man to walk close to God and walk not only close, but in relationship with him. God, being all-knowing, could then talk to us and tell us everything that we don't know. God will give us what we need to subdue the earth and to overcome spiritual darkness as well as attacks from Satan and his minions. The hallmark of the second kingdom was the tree of knowledge. That tree gave Adam and Eve the understanding that intellect or knowledge, desire, passion, emotions, and relationship not with God, relationship with darkness actually would get them where they wanted to go. They were told that it was really good for food, and it was obviously beautiful to look at. They were told it could make one as wise as God. It was temporal, granted, but it was filled with the idea that man could solve his own problems. And man didn't need God to succeed. In fact, God was actually holding man back. The thought of the kingdom of heaven continued throughout the Old Testament, we find. David and other kings were, well, they wrote of the kingdom in the Psalms as well as the books of the Kings and the Chronicles. The prophets of old wrote of a kingdom of God that was coming that had no end. And in its fullness, death, sorrow, and disease would all be overcome. You want to learn the deeper mysteries of God, but feel overwhelmed with your schedule. Introducing John Paul's online classroom. Attend his classes without leaving your home, fitting your lifestyle. Explore subjects like dream interpretation, 
hearing from God, living the spiritual life, prayer and spiritual warfare. Watch and take notes with your 200-page companion study guide. To begin your journey, go to dreamsandmysteries.com and click on John Paul's online classroom or call 1-800-538-5285. Many of us are missing out on one of the greatest gifts Christians have today a deepening relationship with the Holy Spirit. This mysterious relationship begins at salvation, but like all relationships, it takes time to develop. Relationship with the Holy Spirit and Personage of the Holy Spirit is a five-disc teaching series that will help you uncover the eight keys to exercising the gifts of the Holy Spirit. What gift you have that the enemy wants to destroy? What it means to be born of the Spirit plus so much more that you may have never even considered that the Holy Spirit wants to do in you. The same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives in you and desires a relationship with you. For your gift of $45 or more, we'd like to send you these resources on deepening your relationship with the Holy Spirit. To start your journey, go to dreamsandmysteries.com or call 1-800-538-5285. The kingdom of heaven was not just a kingdom, it was the highest kingdom above every other kingdom, natural or spiritual. It would expose the covert nature of darkness. It's all about destroying that darkness and evil in every form in which it's found. It's about returning the relationship of God and man to its original structure and purpose. What is necessary then for this incredible kingdom of God to come? Well, the first step is a strategy that the crucifixion campaign would precede the kingdom campaign. Why? Because it made step two possible. And that step is that through the blood of Jesus, atonement was made possible and the chains of Satan the tyrant would be broken off of you and me. The third step would then be to destroy the work of the evil one and establish a means whereby man could live a righteous life. The Lord displayed in the Exodus of Israel that if you deliver a people from their bondage without changing the heart of the people, they'll return to their old way of thinking and their old way of acting. And when that happens, they always return to the bondage they were previously in. So God sent his son to change the heart of man. And he did that so that the final visible evidence of the kingdom could come to earth. So Jesus embarked on a sevenfold mission to implement the kingdom. One, change how mankind thought about the father, who he was, what he did, what he was all about. When you see me, you've seen him. Number two, he must live a sinless life in order to repeal the earthly sovereignty of Satan because the first Adam lost that authority because he didn't live that sinless life. Number three, in so doing, Jesus would provide a way to atone for sin and redeem the world or those who would believe in him. Number four, as he did, he would demonstrate how the kingdom would destroy the work of the evil one. Five, he would prepare the way for the Holy Spirit to come and the Holy Spirit would impregnate the world with the leaven of the kingdom of heaven. Number six, he would live a life that would reveal to mankind how they might express the kingdom of heaven while alive right here on earth. Number seven, in so doing, Jesus would promote righteousness as the first requirement for the kingdom to work. In other words, the kingdom of heaven would expand at the rate of the expansion of righteousness. The prophets of old understood the coming of the kingdom would take place in the last days. And when it did, communication between God and man would increase in a multitude of ways. The prophet Joel said that a sign of this coming, the coming of this kingdom, there would be an increase in dreams and visions being given to people just like you. I dreamed I was in my parents' house where I grew up. 
As I was standing there, I was hearing all these strange noises like creaking and heavy breathing. I asked my mom what was causing the noise and she calmly replied, Oh, I think it's a dragon. A dragon. Can I get you some tea? There's a dragon on the roof. We should have tea. Naturally, I was concerned, so I went over and looked out the back door just in time to see this huge figure take off from our roof and land in a neighbor's yard. It didn't look like a traditional dragon, though. It looked like a giant man with dragon wings. Anyway, it was killing something in the neighbor's yard, and I suggested someone should probably hunt that thing down and kill it. But my mom came up with an excuse and just said something like, Have you seen the size of that thing? That's going to make an awful mess. Anyway, the dragon came over to our yard again, and it was looking through all the doors and windows. And as it started to look in through the back door, I warned my mom to get away from the back door because it was looking in. And she just calmly got her tea in her magazine and stood over in the corner and kind of out of sight as the dragon was looking in. And then I woke up. This dream is a dream about family issues. It happened in the family house and family members were present. Looking out the back window speaks of looking into the history of the family. And when he did, the dreamer saw the dragon flying and recognized it wasn't just a dragon. It was a man with dragon wings, not a dragon of dra- with dragon wings, a man with dragon wings. Now, that happens to speak to an issue of the fear of man. You see, it was the man that had the wings, not the dragon. And in the dream, this fear of man is actually the fear of overstepping your bounds. That's what keeps you bound up inside the walls of the family house. The fact that nobody seemed terrified by this this kind of a strange issue has means that everybody's kind of grown accustomed to this as a normal way of life. So why try to change things that could get really messy and make things very uncomfortable to the family? The dragon obviously attacked people who stepped outside the boundaries of of their dwelling and attacked the neighbor. And the fear is that if anybody stepped outside, that it would also attack them. So let's just stay within what the family has always done, nice and safe in our boundaries. When the mother moved to the corner, then it it was indicating that this was a place of safety. In other words, I want to limit the direction pain can come from. And so moving into the corner is a way of limiting the possibilities of that pain. But here's the problem. You see, you looked outside and that means you can see your future, but you can't quite get to your future. You can see what the problem is, but you never quite address the problem. The reason why God would give you this dream is to let you know your future is coming much quicker than you might think. And if you're going to walk into your future, you're going to have to address this issue that's been in the family for generations. But God gave you the dream, and that's very important because he's letting you know this issue can be conquered through his hand on your life. He wants you to reach your purpose. He wants you to reach your destiny, and he wants you to reach it to your fullness. God wants you to walk into the purpose for which you were created. To reach your future, you're going to have to kill that dragon. Over the last 30 years, John Paul Jackson has studied how God speaks metaphorically through dreams, parables, and proverbs in the Bible. God wants all believers to understand their dreams, and that includes you. For your gift of $60 or more, we'd like to send you the Essentials of Dreams bundle. This bundle includes a two CD set teaching the basics of dreams and visions, John Paul's advanced six CD set, Essentials of Dreams and Visions, and a three CD set on the biblical model of dream interpretation. Also included, the Moments with God Dream Journal, plus four dream cards to help you understand your dreams. Order your Essentials of Dreams bundle today. Visit dreamsandmysteries.com or call 1-800-538-5285.
The secular world has been busy redefining knowledge so as to remove God's kingdom from man's thinking. They have tried to make the knowledge of God and of the spiritual life seem foolish. It's not scientific or it's not predictable, they say. Consequently, with that line of thinking, everything that is fundamentally important to the well-being of humanity and human existence has begun to erode from our global field of knowledge. This has generated a feeling of boredom within our own lives, which has created an addiction to reality programs, media-driven celebrities, sporting events, and video games, all because we're missing the wonder and excitement of the kingdom of heaven, and we don't even know it. With the Exodus of Israel in the Bible, God revealed that if you deliver people from their bondage without changing their heart, the people return to their old way of thinking and thus return to their bondage. So God sent his son to change the heart of man before the final evidence of the kingdom would be seen. And he gave us the understanding that the kingdom must be sought after. The prophets understood that the coming of the kingdom of heaven would take place in the last days. And when it did, God would make a way for communication between God and man, not just God and prophets or God and priests, but God and you and me to reach new heights. In this kingdom of heaven, anyone could be touched by the Spirit of God. Any believer could prophesy or could have a dream or a vision, and God would pour out His Spirit in such a way that signs and wonders would greatly increase, truly. God's kingdom would come to earth as it is in heaven. There are evidences that we see that kingdom of God is expanding, it's coming, it's growing. Jesus told us to go out and heal the sick, cast out demons, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, and as you go, tell them, the kingdom of heaven has come upon you. He also told us there are keys to the kingdom of heaven, but that is a mystery for another time.